All right, let's dive in. You know, you sent over this huge stack of articles and research and even your own notes about comic book investments. Seems like you're really serious about this. Yeah, there's a... We're going to tackle your big question today. Are comic books still a good investment today? Okay. I mean, some comics have reached absolutely insane prices. We're talking millions of dollars right. for a single issue. But is that like the norm or just a few super lucky finds? That's what we're going to find out today together. You know, what I find really fascinating is how comic books, they've gone from just like simple entertainment, right? to these highly sought after collectibles mm -hmm. and to understand like why that's happened, we kind of need to look back at how this market developed over time. Okay, so let's rewind the clock a little bit. When did these pieces of paper, you know, become something people were willing to pay big bucks for? Hmm. Well, the late 20th century, that's when you really saw comic book values start to take off, kind of like what happens with, you know, any collectible really. As time goes by, the supply dwindles especially for items in good condition. And for comics, you know, this coincided with a growing awareness of their cultural significance. Oh, okay. So the nostalgia factor started to kick in, right? People wanted a piece of their childhood. Exactly. Think about iconic issues like Action Comics, Hashtag One, which introduced Superman all the way back in 1938, Wait. or Detective Comics, Hashtag 27, where Batman made his first appearance in 1939. But I mean, these weren't just stories anymore. They became historical artifacts. They marked like the birth of these legendary characters. And they kind of became the blue chip comics, similar to like blue chip stocks, mm. you know, seen as these really reliable and valuable investments. That's a really good point. So that kind of brings us to the million dollar question, right? What's the state of the comic book market today? Is it all sunshine and rainbows? Or are there, you know, some storm clouds brewing? Well, you know, the market, it's more complex than ever before, really. Mm. We're seeing both incredible opportunities and some challenges, too. On the one hand, those rare vintage comics especially from what we call the golden and silver ages, they're still highly sought after. Yeah, we definitely have to talk about the elephant in the room here, that amazing fantasy, hashtag 15, the first appearance of your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, which just recently sold for over $3 million. I mean, that has to be a sign <laughs> that those vintage comics, they're still gold mine, right? It definitely highlights the potential for sure. But here's where things get really interesting. Even within vintage comics, condition is everything. It's absolutely crucial. And that's why we have these grading services like CGC, you know, mm -hmm. the Certified Guarantee Company. They've become the industry standard for assessing a comics condition. They use a 0-10 scale with 10 being, you know, absolutely perfect. And believe me, a mm -hmm. high CGC grade can set a comics value through the roof. Wow. So it's not just about having an old comic. It's about having one in pristine condition, verified by the experts. It's like having a little plastic time capsule, you know? Protecting a piece of pop culture history. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Now, while vintage comics have that, you know, mm. they have a certain allure to them, the modern comic book market, that presents a, a bit of a different landscape. I mean, we've seen this surge in popularity, fueled in part by, you know, all these blockbuster superhero movies. Mm. But it's also a more, uh, how should I say, it's a more speculative market. Okay. So are those brand new comics hot off the press worth investing in, or is it more of a gamble? Well, it's not as straightforward as with vintage comics, that's for sure. While some modern issues definitely have the potential to appreciate in value, it's really crucial to understand the factors that are at play here. Yeah. For instance, low print runs, special variant covers, think, you know, limited edition covers with unique artwork, and of course, first appearances of new characters. All of these can influence a comic's value. So there's a lot more guesswork involved compared to those, you know. <laughs> <laughs> established vintage classics. Is it like trying to predict which new song will become the next chart topper? There's definitely an element of that to it, yeah. Yeah. While some modern comics do become highly sought after, yeah. you know, many just don't appreciate significantly. And we also have to consider the changing landscape mm -hmm. of how people are actually consuming comics these days. Yeah. With the rise of digital comics and all these streaming platforms, fewer people are reading print editions purely for entertainment. Right. That makes a lot of sense. Why buy a physical comic when you can just read it instantly on your phone or tablet? But does that mean that physical comics are like doomed to become worthless relics? Not necessarily. It just means the market is evolving. And the reasons that people collect comics, they're becoming more diverse, you know, while well, some are in it for that, you know, the potential investment return. Others are driven by passion, nostalgia, maybe, or the desire to own a tangible piece of art and history. And that's something we'll definitely delve into further as we, uh, as we continue our deep dive here.
Okay, so we've kind of established that the comic book market's a bit like a superhero team, right? You've got your powerhouses, you've got your wild cards, and you've definitely got your unpredictable villains. But for someone like you, who's looking to potentially invest, what are like the key things to keep in mind? What separates a smart investment from a risky gamble? That's the question, isn't it? It all, it all boils down to, you know, understanding those factors that really drive value. Rarity, as we've touched on, is absolutely crucial. The rarer a comic is, the higher its potential value is going to be. Mm -hmm. And this applies to both vintage and modern comics. So first appearances, limited editions, those super rare variant covers, those are the golden tickets. Precisely. But it's not just about rarity. Condition plays a huge role as well. A comic in mint condition. Yeah especially one with a high CGC grade, that's going to command a premium price. It's like the difference between, you know, a classic car that's been meticulously restored oh. and one that's been rusting away in a junkyard. Ooh, yeah. So those plastic slabs from CGC, they're not just for protection. They're like a seal of approval. That can make all the difference. Exactly. And then you have cultural relevance. Comics that are tied to, you know, really popular characters, iconic storylines, huh? or successful movie adaptations those tend to hold their value much better. Think about it. People want a piece of the stories and characters that they love. It's like owning a piece of pop culture history, right? But with so many comics out there, how do you even begin to like narrow down the options? Is there a secret formula for picking winners? Well, there's no crystal ball, unfortunately. But there are some smart strategies that you can employ. For starters, it's always wise to diversify your collection. Instead of you know putting all your eggs in one basket, so to speak, huh? spread the risk by investing in comics from different genres, different eras, and even different publishers. They don't just stick to the big names like Marvel and DC. Exactly. Explore independent comics, delve into different genres, like science fiction, fantasy, or horror. You might be surprised at the gems you uncover. And speaking of gems, remember those key issues we discussed, first appearances, milestone storylines, Iconic covers, those tend to be the most sought after. So it's all about like understanding what makes a comic significant, both in terms of its place in history and its appeal to collectors. But even with all this knowledge, isn't there still like a degree of uncertainty? I mean, trends change, tastes evolve. Who knows what the future holds? You're absolutely right. The market is always in flux, always changing. That's why it's so important to stay informed, be adaptable, and maybe even a little bit adventurous. Keep an eye on emerging trends, be open to exploring new territories, and don't be afraid to trust your instincts. So it sounds like there's a real art to comic book investing. It's this blend of research, strategy, and a little bit of intuition. But before we get too lost in the complexities of the market, let's take a moment to appreciate the core of it all. The stories themselves. You're absolutely right. At the end of the day, comic books are about those captivating narratives those compelling characters, and the power of imagination. They transport us to different worlds, introduce us to these extraordinary individuals, and inspire us with tales of heroism, adventure, and even the struggles of everyday life. And that's something that we can all connect with, whether we're seasoned collectors or just starting to explore the world of comics. It's that passion for the stories that makes this whole endeavor so rewarding. Precisely. And speaking of passion, I think it's time we address the elephant in the digital room, the emergence of digital comics and NFTs. Okay, let's dive into the digital realm. Is this the future of comic book collecting? It's certainly shaking things up, that's for sure. The rise of you know, blockchain technology and NFTs, it's created this whole new way for people to own and collect digital versions of their favorite comics. Platforms like V, for example, yeah. they offer these limited edition digital comics with unique signatures and verifiable ownership. So it's like having a digital certificate of authenticity for your virtual comic book collection. Exactly. And the appeal for a lot of collectors is that scarcity and exclusivity. Yeah. These digital assets are often released in very limited quantities, which makes them, you know, highly sought after. But it's still early days for digital comic collecting. And the long-term value, well, that remains to be seen. It's like the wild west of the comic book world, okay. right? Full of potential and uncharted territory. But for those who are, you know, hesitant to embrace the digital frontier, what are the key arguments for sticking with those, yeah. you know, tangible paper and ink comics? Well, there's something undeniably special about holding a physical comic in your hands, you know, the tangible connection to the story, the artwork and the history. It's like owning a first edition of a beloved novel, right? The weight yeah. of the paper, the smell of the ink, the sense of history it evokes. It's an experience you just can't replicate digitally. Precisely. 
and for many collectors, that physicality is an integral part of the enjoyment. They appreciate the artistry of the printing process, the tactile experience of turning the pages, mm -hmm. and the satisfaction of, you know, mm -hmm. displaying their collection on a shelf. Yeah. It's like having a personal museum dedicated to their passion. But even with the allure of the physical, there are challenges that come with, you know, collecting and preserving those delicate pieces of history. Absolutely. Physical comics require proper storage and handling to maintain their condition. Exposure to light, humidity, even the oils from our hands. All of that can cause damage over time. And as we've discussed, condition is paramount when it comes to value. So it's not just about buying a comic. It's about becoming a custodian of its legacy, right? right? You need to create the right environment and handle those comics with care, almost like museum artifacts. Exactly. And that's where those grading services like CGC come in. They provide a level of authentication and assurance for both buyers and sellers. It's like having a team of experts safeguarding the integrity of the market. Precisely. Now, while we've focused a lot on, you know, the investment aspect of comic book collecting, it's crucial to remember that the most rewarding part of this hobby is often the personal connection. Oh, absolutely. It's the stories, the characters, the artwork. Those are the things that truly capture our hearts. And that's something we should never lose sight of regardless of market trends or investment potential. Well said. It's the passion for these stories that fuse the entire comic book world. And that passion. It can lead to incredible discoveries, whether you're searching for a rare vintage gem or stumbling upon a hidden gem in a stack of modern comics. So it seems like the comic book world really offers something for everyone. The thrill of the hunt, the joy of discovery, and of course the potential for a solid investment. But as we wrap up this deep dive, I want to circle back to, you know, your initial goal, figuring out if comic books are still a good investment. What's the verdict? Well, it's not a simple yes or no answer, unfortunately. As we've discussed, there are definitely pros and cons to consider. On the plus side, you know those iconic characters and stories, they've proven to, you know, hold their value over time especially those early appearances and key issues, the market is also becoming increasingly global with you know growing interest from collectors worldwide. And let's not forget the cultural longevity of these characters. They're ingrained in our collective consciousness, oh. constantly being reimagined and reintroduced to new generations. That kind of staying power is hard to find in any investment, really. Right. But you've also highlighted the risks, too. The market can be volatile, mm. especially for those modern comics. And then there's the cost of, you know, storing and maintaining those precious pieces of paper. It's not as simple as just buying a comic and stuffing it in a drawer. No, not at all. You need to factor in the cost of professional grading, proper storage materials, and potentially even insurance, especially if you have a really high-value collection. And you also need to stay informed about market trends, which, as we know, can shift based on, well, everything from movie releases to, you know, the whims of collectors. So it's not just a passive investment, right? You need to be actively involved, doing your research, staying engaged with the market. It's almost like a combination of collecting and, like, stock trading. That's actually a good analogy. Yeah. But there's one crucial difference, that emotional element. When you invest in comic books, you're not just buying a piece of paper. You're buying into a story, mm -hmm. a character. A world that resonates with you. And that's that passion that drives so many collectors. They're not just looking for financial gain. They're looking for a connection to something that they genuinely love. Precisely. And that's what makes comic book collecting so unique. It's an investment that can bring both financial rewards and personal fulfillment. It's the best of both worlds. Yeah. So for someone like you, who's been researching and considering, you know, diving into this world, what's the, like, key takeaway? What's the one piece of advice that you would offer? Well, if you're looking to invest in comic books, hmm. I think the most important thing is to start with passion. Invest in the stories, the characters, yeah. and the artists that you genuinely love. That way, even if a particular comic, you know, doesn't appreciate in value as much as you hoped, you'll still have the joy of owning a piece of art that brings you happiness. It's about finding that balance between passion and profit. And it's about recognizing that comic books, at their core, are about storytelling. They're about transporting us to different worlds, introducing us to, you know, extraordinary heroes and villains, and making us believe in the power of imagination. I couldn't have said it better myself. Yeah. And now, I have a final thought-provoking question for you. If you could own any comic book in the world, regardless of its value, what would it be and why? Hmm. That's a great question. It really forces you to think about what truly matters to you as a collector. Is it the historical significance, the rarity, 
yeah. the artwork, or that personal connection to a particular story. It's a question that every comic book enthusiast should ask themselves. Absolutely. And the answer might surprise you. It might be a childhood favorite that, you know, start your love for comics or a rare gem that you've always dreamed of owning. Or perhaps it's a comic that you haven't even discovered yet. You know, a hidden treasure waiting to be unearthed. And that's the beauty of the comic book world, isn't it? It's full of surprises, mm. hidden gems, and endless possibilities for discovery. We hope this deep dive has given you the knowledge and inspiration to embark on your own comic book journey. Happy collecting. And that's a wrap on this episode of The Deep Dive. We've explored the history, the trends, the risks and the rewards of comic book collecting. We've delved into the world of vintage classics, modern marvels, and even the digital frontier of NFTs. But most importantly, we've reminded ourselves that comic books, at their heart, are about the power of storytelling, the thrill of adventure, and the joy of connecting with characters and worlds that spark our imagination. Until next time, keep exploring, keep collecting, and keep believing in the magic of comic books 